Hey folks, Brian here, your honest mechanic. Today, we're discussing a topic that's got more myths than a, well, let's just say there's a lot of opinions out there. We're talking about engine break-in. So what exactly is engine break-in? Well, folks, it's that crucial initial period when all those brand spanking new engine components are getting acquainted. We're talking about a critical process where parts, especially those piston rings, are settling into their respective surfaces. Now, why is this such a big deal? Because this process is essential for ensuring proper sealing and minimizing wear over your engine's entire lifespan. We're allowing these parts to wear ever so slightly against each other, creating that perfect fit. And trust me, that perfect fit, it's not just about bragging rights. It's about better compression, improved fuel efficiency, and reduced oil consumption. In other words, a happier, healthier engine that'll keep going for years to come. There's a common belief that modern engines don't require a break-in period because of advanced manufacturing techniques and tighter tolerances achieved in factories. While it's true that manufacturing has significantly improved, the fundamental laws of physics remain unchanged. Metal components interacting under stress will always benefit from a proper break-in process to ensure optimal performance and longevity. So, what's the truth about break-in? Well, it's not as simple as baby it for 1,000 miles or drive it like you stole it. The key is variation. You want to expose the engine to different loads and RPMs, but without going to extremes. Here's what I recommend. 1. For the first 500 miles, avoid constant speeds. Mix it up between city and highway driving. Don't lug the engine. Downshift if you're below 2,000 revolutions per minute. No hard acceleration or high RPMs. Keep it under 4,000 revolutions per minute. Absolutely no cruise control. You want those RPM variations. 2. From 500 to 1,000 miles. Gradually increase the load and RPM range. Still no prolonged high-speed driving or maximum acceleration. 3. After 1,000 miles, you can start to open it up more, but still, avoid redline for a while. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Oil changes. The factory fill oil is often a special break-in formula. It's designed to allow for some controlled wear to help establish that perfect component fit. But here's the kicker. It's also full of all the microscopic metal particles from that initial wear-in period. That's why I always, always recommend an early oil change. I don't care what the manual says about 10,000 mile intervals. Get that first oil change done at around 500 to 1,000 miles. You're flushing out all those metal particles before they can do any damage. It's cheap insurance for the life of your engine. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but Brian, my buddy's car is fine after 200,000 miles, and he didn't do any of this. Yeah, and some people eat junk food all day and never gain weight. Does that mean it's a good idea for everyone? We're talking about optimizing for the best possible outcome here. During break-in, those engine components are establishing their working relationship. This process creates those metal particles I mentioned earlier. It's normal, but you don't want that stuff hanging around in your engine. That's why varying the load is so important. Different RPMs and loads help distribute oil evenly and promote uniform wear. You need to experience a range of driving conditions.